SpaceX Starlink's new community plan slashes internet cost. Can it lower your monthly bill? It might. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we're coming to the end of some fireside. So good, so good, that smokiness. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, AI, all kinds of great tech on this channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about SpaceX Starlink and the reason being is something just massive just dropped. And what it is is community plan. What is this community plan anyways? Well, a lot of providers have talked about this in the past and what they have done instead of implementing a community plan, what they have done is they have penalized anyone that shares their internet service. So if you were to have like a cable company's internet or some local fiber company and you shared that internet with like your neighbor, they probably sue you. I don't know. They would fine you or they would give you some kind of, I don't know, fee or maybe they'll drop you or something. Well, Elon Musk says, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to allow you to share. Hence, the community plan. So this is really big because there's a lot of people out there that just simply can't afford $120 per month for residential service. Well, maybe you have a neighbor that you want to share with. Now your bill goes down to 60. Maybe you have two or three neighbors and your bill goes down to about 20 per month. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Really cool stuff. I can't believe that he's actually doing this, but I think he's just making so much money hand over fist. He just wants to get in front of the eight ball, let's say instead of behind the eight ball. And since they're doing so well and they have so many satellites up there and all the rest are trying to play catch up, they might as well just stretch their legs a little bit. And this is going to be a stretch and this is going to force other providers to do the same. Maybe even regulators to look this over and see what they need to do. Anyways, I was reading an article. I want to go through this with you. And then when I'm done with this, of course, I'll give you my commentary as always do. And then down below, I want to hear from you. What do you think about all this? Will it affect you? Can it affect you? Can this lower your monthly bill using SpaceX Starlink? And if so, where are you located, right? Now, this is something that's just rolling out, so I'm not sure where it's going to be rolled out, but I understand it is the U.S. as well as certain countries internationally. So we will see. Let me know where you are if this is available to you. I want to hear from you. Down below, if you don't want to put something down there, I understand, put an emoji. At least I know that you watched a video. That'd be very helpful if you enjoy the content. Throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Do all of those things. I also put together over 540 videos about SpaceX Starlink over the last 50 months just for you. I'll put a link right here. If you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thanks button. Thank you, YouTube, for it. You can click on that. Give a dollar or two if you want. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better even better. Anyways, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying a radical shift in satellite internet pricing. Yes, it is. In a move that will alter satellite internet economics, SpaceX has quietly begun testing a new offering called Starlink Community. I like the name. The concept is simple but revolutionary. Instead of each household purchasing its own dish and service plan, entire neighborhoods, apartment complex, or even small towns can share a single Starlink terminal, dramatically lowering per person cost. Well, obviously, you're not going to have an entire town, but we'll get into that in just a second. How it works, one dish, many users. Under the pilot program, a SpaceX Starlink dish is installed at a central location, such as a school or community center or shared building rooftop. From there, a wired or wireless network distributes a signal to multiple homes or users. SpaceX bills the main account holder, but the community members split the cost. Pretty damn cool. Early testers report pricing dropped to $20 or even $60 per month per household, a fraction of the standard $120 residential fee. It is. The problem it solves. 
Rural communities in low-income regions have long struggled with reliable, affordable internet. Satellite systems like Starlink have closed much of the coverage gap, but high monthly costs remain a barrier. Starlink Community directly addresses this by spreading that cost across many users without sacrificing the high-speed, low-latency performance that has made SpaceX Starlink a lifeline for remote areas. Why now? That is a good question. The timing is strategic. Global satellite broadband competition is heating up, with Amazon's Project Kuiper and OneWeb racing to deploy their own constellations. Regulatory agencies worldwide are also reconsidering funding rules for rural broadband projects, potentially allowing community-based solutions to qualify for subsidies. That would be a good thing. By launching Starlink Community Now, SpaceX positions itself to dominate this segment before rivals catch up. Very important. Potential game changer for schools and villages. Education systems could be one of the biggest winners. Imagine a rural school connecting its entire campus and nearby families through a single dish. In parts of Africa, South America, and rural North America, that could mean online classes, telemedicine, and digital banking where it was never possible before. What's next? While SpaceX hasn't released a full public rollout timeline, early community trials are already underway in the U.S. as well as select international locations. If the model proves scalable, it could fundamentally change how satellite internet is sold, turning SpaceX Starlink from a household product into an essential piece of shared infrastructure. Essential piece of shared infrastructure. Yes! Now we know that a lot of cities have been trying to do this Wi-Fi for the entire city for a long time and it just never works out very well. In my personal opinion, I haven't found one that works well at least. So it's been tried, but it doesn't work too well. What Elon is trying to do is instead of what they're talking about in this article, getting like an entire town on a dish, which is just ridiculous, um, maybe putting three or four or five families together, especially when the homes are very tight. Here we are on five acres. It's gonna be a little bit harder. We might be able to hit a neighbor, maybe two maximum. The question here is, is how fast is fast and how much internet do you need? And that's where things get a little bit sideways here. I think this is a great idea. And I do believe that once we see SpaceX Starlink version three satellites up there, and there's going to be gigabit speeds coming down, first it's gonna be commercial most likely, maybe boaters out there are going to be able to get it, planes and whatnot, trains. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of thing, but eventually we're all going to end up having gigabit connections. It's not going to be a symmetrical connection, but still it will have maybe 40, 50 megabits up and a gigabit down from SpaceX Starlink from a satellite at about 340 kilometers in space, which is insane if you think about it. But what's also incredible here is the latency will be sub 20 milliseconds. That's as fast as cable companies. That's getting close to fiber. I mean, my fiber, because we have fiber, we have SpaceX Starlink, we have T-Mobile, fiber is going at about four to six milliseconds. So if you can get this at about 14 milliseconds, which I can through SpaceX Starlink, that's pretty damn good from a satellite, once again, at 300 plus kilometers in space. So I think this is pretty good, making this whole idea of micro ISPs with a couple of people. You don't need a whole town or a neighborhood or you're not going to put an entire school on one dish. There's just simply no way to do it. But, but you can aggregate a few of these dish together and then put an entire school. That's not a problem at all. The biggest problem is going to be the up speed, because as you separate that into multiple people, the up speed will become less and less and less for each one. And instead of having a gigabit or a thousand megabits down, you're sitting at like um, 40, probably 50 maximum, maximum. So that's going to be hard to divide that into a few people. For now, it's not a big deal because right now we're only getting about 10 to 15 megabits per second.
So down the road, when we're getting about 50, you could probably divide that into two, three, four people. And then once again, divide the cost. And instead of $120 per month, you end up paying 40 or maybe even $20 per month. Depends on how tight or how many people that you can get onto the system and how fast any of them really need. There's a lot of people out there in the rural community that really do not need a lot of speed. And the reason being is they've been using Viasat and HughesNet, which is our pieces of crap for so long. When they get SpaceX Starlink, they're like, oh my God, I don't even know what to do with it all. I don't need it all. And that's why a lot of them have transitioned from the full blown package to the light. So instead of getting the standard residential for $120, they're getting the $80 package, which is the light version. It's a little bit deprioritized, a little bit slower, but that's enough for them. They don't need anything faster. So if you get the full blown package for $120 and then divide it into like four, you're doing pretty damn good. I think, <laughs> what, 30 bucks a piece or something. So it's really interesting what they're doing here with the Starlink community. I think this is going to be a really big thing moving forward. Maybe not this moment. They're going to be doing these trials. They're going to be doing tests and see how they go. The early trials are going to tell a lot. All right. How many people can they put on a network without it getting completely congested? Who's going to complain if the third guy or the fourth guy down the rung here is getting like really bad service, that's going to be a problem. So it's got to be divided equally amongst, let's say, two or three or four people. That's going to be very, very important to do. And maybe the hardware is going to be doing it in the future. That's all it takes is a simple update to the router software, and you know they can do a lot. As of right now, we see the Mini doing this crazy thing where it's going to dial in to satellites even quicker at milliseconds, like split, like literally like 20 times in a second. It's testing out which satellite is faster and then moving to it, as they call it, switching which is really cool, beam switching. So they can do that through software, so they can definitely do something like this using QoS or quality of service so that everyone gets an equal cut of the pie. So not one person gets a bigger slice. So in my personal opinion, I think that this is really big. I really think that the regulators are gonna have to look at this and say, oh God, what are we gonna do here? And also the other ISPs, they're gonna say, geez, all right, the, the prices are gonna keep coming down lower and lower and lower, what are we gonna do? SpaceX Starlink is a thorn in the side of all ISPs, okay? I don't care, even the fiber ISPs out there because this thing is gonna get faster and faster and faster and more and more people are going to use it as it's ubiquitous across the entire world, right? Never even mind talking about DTC or direct to sell where you can just use your cell phone, just pick it up and make a call. That's just a month or so away. That's crazy with no service at all. So what SpaceX Starlink is doing here once again, it's very disruptive and the telcos are going to be hurting, especially like the T-Mobiles and the AT&T and the Verizon and all the rest of them, because they're, the writing is on the wall, guys. The writing is on the wall. So I want to know what say you, what do you think? Is this something that you would participate in if it was available in your area? Do you have like a close neighbor that you would like to maybe share your internet with? Remember, ISPs never allowed this. They would kick you off the service. They'd probably sue you. They would just lose their mind if you shared your internet because they want the money. Elon's like, no problem, just share, share. I don't care, you can share a whole community. I don't care. What? That is just not normal. But remember, there is a finite amount of that pie and you can only divide it up into so many slices. So even though he's giving it away, so to speak, there's only so much that can be given. And he realizes that. But still, this is a really great thing because it goes, it's a contrarian type of view in comparison to every other ISP out there. No one's doing it which is really, really good. Anyways, guys, once again, what say you down below? I wanna hear from you. And if you don't wanna put anything down here, like I said before, throw an emoji, throw a poop emoji. I don't care. Whatever you put down there is fine. At least I know that you watched the video. Anyways, if you enjoyed it, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. More importantly, share it with your community. Share it with Reddit and Facebook and wherever you frequent. That would be awesome. Help grow the channel. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected hopefully through SpaceX Starlink. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.